Hello, guten Tag, and welcome to another cinematography breakdown. Today we're not going to break down an interview that I shot or even a narrative scene, but my talking head setup. Because whenever I changed it to this corner, I got a lot of compliments from you guys and asking how I achieved this look. So we're going to break it down. The camera that I use, the audio equipment, as well as the lighting, and also the entire scenery. And this video is sponsored by Motion VFX, but I will talk about this later because it also plays a role in what the final YouTube talking head looks like. Let's start with the set design, because no matter what you shoot, set design plays a huge role in what the final product will look like. When I designed this corner for my new talking head setup, I was really particular about the colors that I chose. I went off, I think, Ikea or even Amazon to buy this shelf in the background so that I have a starting point and I can place some camera equipment and lenses and just make this feel a little bit more like a YouTube studio talking setup. The overall color palette here is early tones, a lot of browns, greens and blacks. I already had this really nice couch in the background and that just fits the color scheme very well. I then added in a lot of plants and 99% of all the plants here are plastic except for this one which is already on its last breath because well I don't have a green thumb and I'm not really good with plants. I also decided to shoot into the corner of the room because this will provide us with a lot of leading lines and drawing the attention towards myself and not anything else in the background. I also decided to use this practical lamp in the background to just provide us with a bit of color contrast and also a bit of warmth. And I found it on Home Depot for less than 100 bucks. And last but not least, try to have your subject's clothes match the scenery. And here I'm trying to wear a lot of early tones like greens, blacks, everything that's neutral. And I try to stay away from bright neon orange and pink colors because it really wouldn't complement the background. Next up on our list is the camera equipment. As my main camera of choice, I'm using the Canon C70 with a 35mm Sigma 1.4 on a speed booster. I like using a wider lens like the 35mm, especially on the speed booster for this talking head setup because it brings me closer to the audience. If I were to choose a longer lens, a 75mm or higher, it would really kind of isolate me and wouldn't really give this home-like feeling and me talking to you, my audience. The 35mm also gives a lot of context of where we are and we are sitting here in my studio and that makes the viewer usually feel a little bit more welcome and home-like. I'm shooting everything wide open to separate me from the background because again with 35mm usually a lot more is in focus than on a longer lens so shooting wide open provides me with enough blurry background. I'm also using a 1 8 strength black mist filter on top of my lens. The Sigma is a clinical sharp lens and I want to take away a bit from this digital sharpness. I'm shooting everything in autofocus and it's 100% reliable. I'm shooting everything in the smallest MP4 codec for this talking head in 25 frames with 180 degree shutter. My camera's white balance is set to 5600 Kelvin because the dominant light source lighting this room is the window behind me and the sun spilling in. But I will talk about this more in the lighting section. The camera currently sits on a Manfrotto tripod with a series fluid head. And I chose the Manfrotto for this because I'm sitting on a beanie bag here on the floor and I'm really low to the ground. And most tripods don't have the required minimum height for me to do this. And the Manfrotto is actually quite small and it works perfectly for a low angle setup like this. And just so you know, if you wanna check out anything that I use in this video, I will have links down in the description below to everything that is being used for this YouTube setup. Before we move on to audio and lighting, let's talk about our sponsor Motion VFX. Because the plugins from Motion VFX play a huge role in why my YouTube videos look the way they do. I literally have dozens of plugins from Motion VFX for Final Cut and they're a breeze to use and they can level up your production company without having to have any knowledge about how to use motion graphics at all. I use Motion VFX for all of my animated titles and this could be for lower thirds as well as callouts, transitioning titles, logos, everything. They have a huge variety, everything is highly customizable and everything just raises your production value by a lot. I also use Motion VFX plugins for all of my call to action titles. Subscribe, like, follow me on Instagram and they have a template for all of these. One of my favorite effects that I use all the time is the smooth zoom effect and you can even change if you want to have it instant or smooth or gradually. And I use this for tutorials as well as client work. 
So if you're interested in Motion VFX, I highly recommend checking out the link down in the description below. They have it for DaVinci Resolve as well as Final Cut. Now let's talk a little bit about audio. I record everything externally with a shotgun microphone that sits around 30 centimeters, around one feet away from my face. The shotgun microphone of choice is the DayDS Mic 2S and I've been using this for all of my talking heads, for client work, testimonials, as well as for interviews. It's a short condenser microphone with great quality and it's perfect for indoor scenarios because it also cuts down a little bit of the echo opposed to a longer shotgun microphone. It is connected to my Zoom F6 via an XLR cable. And the Zoom F6 is an external recorder that I use all the time because it features great functionality and amazing quality. The microphone itself sits on a shock mount from SmallRig that is attached to a boom pole that I found off Amazon and it's really affordable and lightweight. And this is connected to a C-stand, but you could easily put this on a light stand as well. At the very last, let's break down the lighting setup. Let's start talking about the key light first. And this is one of my favorite lights ever. And this is the brand new Mega 6 by Intellitech. I've been using Intellitech lights in the past. And if you've ever seen one of my BTS, you've probably seen one of the Intellitech lights. And this one is even better. It's brand new. And what I love about it is that it is so huge, but it doesn't take up a lot of space. This is a really big light source. And if I wanted to have the same source of light, just with a parabolic softbox, it would take up so much more space. And here in my studio with the crooked walls, that just wouldn't be possible. But with the Intellitech, I get a huge light source that fits into a small space and it's also lightweight if I ever wanted to boom it. And it comes with a softbox and different layers of diffusion material. The light is also really powerful. I currently have it set to around 15%, I believe, and I could make it way, way stronger if I wanted to. I highly recommend checking out this light and there's a link to it in the description too. Since the light is bicolor and fully RGB, I have full control over the color temperature. And it's currently set to 5600 Kelvin because I kind of want to match the window light coming in from the outside. Since you can see a big window on camera left in the background, it suggests that there might be another window in front of me also on camera left. As my rim light, I'm using a NAND light pad with Tube 30C2. And this one sits on camera right, just off frame. And since this light is also bicolor and fully RGB, I have it set to 2700 Kelvin to be motivated by the practical lamp in the background. The last light that I'm using for this setup is a Nanlite Forza 60B2. And this one has a spotlight mount attached to it with a gobo. A gobo is this little attachment that goes into the spotlight mount and with it you can create different patterns. And here I chose a pattern that looks really similar to my window blinds. And this pattern just makes the background a bit more interesting. It provides us with even more leading lines and it also provides a bit of this dark light pattern that I'll talk about in basically all of my cinematography breakdowns. And just so you can see what each individual light does, I will turn them all off and then I will turn them on one by one. So as you can see here, this is the scenery without any added lights, just the natural light spilling in. And I set the exposure on my camera for the background so that nothing is really blown out and we have a nice balanced ambience. And I did this with using the ND filters of my camera and it's currently set to six stops of ND. Now let's turn on the practical lamp in the background. As you can see, it just brightens up the background a bit. It just makes the entire scene a bit warmer. And you also have a bit of spill onto the dark side of my face just to give it a bit more context. As our next light, I'm going to bring in my key light. So as you can see, this does a lot and now the exposure on my face is a lot better. I will now bring on the background light. Here you can see the before and after and the background just looks a lot more lively and more interesting. And last but not least, let's bring in our rim light to emphasize the practical in the background a little bit more. And there you have it. All I have to do now is bring everything into post. I don't really need to do a lot of color correction because we exposed everything well. But what I will do is I will throw on one of my custom LUTs just to make the colors pop more and give it a bit more contrast. And for this, I usually use the Bluebird from the Canon version 2 LUT pack. And if you want to check them out, they're also down in the description below. I hope you like this cinematography breakdown, although it wasn't of an actual interview setup or a narrative piece, but I will have both of you in the very near future. So hit that subscribe button. And also, if you like this video, then please give this video a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow. And I hope to see you on the next one.